Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we're going to look at how to create this tunnel effect in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that, let's get started. So you might know that I have a Facebook group where I do a weekly challenge and this time it's this kind of tunnel effect. You can do it with a lot of different things, landscapes, clouds, stuff like that. So I created this and I will show you how how to do that. Um, so let's delete everything here that I've created so far and I start out with two things. First of all I have here an image of a landscape as you can see and you might have to test different landscapes until you find something that works for you. Not everything works just right out of the box. Also I have cut out a guy from a background so he can look into the distance so we have this kind of nice effect and also give it more of a scale and has this kind of silver and feel to it. So the first thing you want to do with the landscape is that you want to stretch it out onto the surface in a way so that it is square like this. So you stretch it because we actually need that for the effect to work. Right click onto the layer and rasterize it so it is a pixel layer because then we can apply effects to it. Good. So the first thing to create this tunnel effect is to go up here to filters and then to distort and then to rectangular to polar like that. And this basically creates that effect but as you can see we have some more work to do. We have this kind of stretched parts here outside so you want to move into that like so, zoom into that a little bit and after you've done that you like you can play around what kind of position you want to have. So this looks kind of good. Okay so let's stay with that. Um, the next thing we need to do is to push this cave, this tunnel more into the distance. To do that we are going to go here to filters again and then to distort and there we have pinch and punch. And we can use that. Uh, you have to understand though that in Affinity Photo this is limited a little bit because the radius is limited by 1024 pixels if the resolution gets higher than that there is a bit of a problem of applying this effect to the picture. So you can see here I can push this back and this makes the tunnel a little bit longer. Let's go back here and go into filter distort and pinch and punch again. So this like that looks pretty good. So the next thing that we have to do is to remove these kind of transitions here that don't look so good. And you can try different methods. For example, uh, you can use the clone brush, you can use the impaint brush tool. The impaint brush tool probably works nicer down here on these kind of things. So let's use it here first on this middle part. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Like so, paint on this. Let's see. Yeah, this is doing an actual pretty good job here. Let's see if it works up here. Not so much. So here we start to get more into a problem and for that I would suggest that you play around with for example your clone brush where the colors are not too extreme so there isn't too much of a problem to fade this into the other side. So to do that what you're going to do is to select your clone brush and then select a starting position. So hold Alt and then click once so you get this kind of cross here. And you want to resize your brush of course, make the opacity 100% at first so you see the picture that you are getting from the clone brush and you can use your left and right arrows on your keyboard to rotate that to a position that is better adjusted to where we want to replace something in the picture. Okay. So now we can make our brush smaller again and we can reduce the opacity and we can see if we can patch this up in a way so this looks like it's softly fading and there is a bit of fog going on and uh, it gives us the illusion that um, there is like a bit more landscape there and it's just fading into the other side. You can see like this works pretty good. Here we have some more problems because 
uh, the contrast is, is much different here. So that might be a bigger challenge. For that, I have another solution I want to show you just to give you different approaches because depending on what kind of landscape you use, this might be more or less complex. So for this, I'm going to duplicate my picture uh, or the layer. I duplicate the layer and I will set this to reduce the opacity, let's say to 70. And with this, I can now resize my landscape and rotate it. So I simply replace basically that kind of area of picture with something that blends better. So we can, for example, try this and you can see now because of the transparency, uh, how well this lines up. And if you find something that works well, that also supports this kind of, um, how can I say spiral effect, maybe a little bit, that would be very helpful. You see like here, the landscape is leaving our picture. So that might be pretty helpful. Uh, we can try this. So let's line this line here up. And also over here, this lines up a little bit. So that's pretty good. I will make this visible 100% again. And then with the layer selected, I click hold alt and click on the mask. And this will give me a negative mask that is already filled with black. And with this mask, I can now use my paintbrush with white in it and make the things visible again that I want to be visible. I can go in here and I can start to paint in the landscape from the other picture to make it visible again. And we can see how far uh, this can take us, how helpful this can be. So let's see here, this works pretty well. Down here, we don't even need it. So I can go back here to black and uh, paint this back in. And this is a bit of a back and forward process until you find something that looks right, that looks good, where you have a good solution uh, for your kind of landscape situation. So don't feel the need that this has to work like at the first attempt. Didn't work for me either at the first attempt. You have to just like play around a little bit, see how well it works. So you can see like here we have this kind of effect where just the landscape is fading. There might be another forest back there. There's a little bit of fog here. So that's okay. That works for us, you know, that is quite okay. So we can go like that. And here we might have to find another solution. Um, in that case, what we could do is let's see first when we blend this, wait, we have to take white here. What happens here? Mm, no, that's not ideal. Let's go back here. So what I'm going to do here is another solution for this. I will create a new pixel layer. I will again take my clone brush from here and I can now start here on that point to cover up this thing that's spiking out here. So up here you have this kind of rotation. I can bring it back to 360. So that's good. And now I will say um, current layer and below. So I can source from the below layers and I will simply paint over this a little bit here so you can see this is going away and I can also blend this and that starts to look pretty good. There's a little bit of a problem here. We might make our brush much smaller. Just start here as a source, cover this up a little bit. And there we go. So that is already pretty good. I'm not super happy with what's happening here. So let's fix that too. Nice big brush like that. I will source the color from over here and just with a low opacity, uh, put some more of this kind of fog effect on here. So that's pretty good. All right. So we have basically uh, fixed this kind of situation. You can see now this plants together rather well. And we will at the end also put a little bit of a fog effect onto our picture overall uh, to make this blend together better. Here is something I'm seeing right now that I'm not super liking. So let's start here again. There we go. Okay. So also maybe over here, put some of that there. Good. So now that we have that, we want to adjust the image a little bit uh, from the colors, from the feeling. 
So I will do the good old rectangle where I use my gradients from the mythical gradient pack. So let's go here to um, swatches. And you can see here we have a lot of different gradients that I've created for you. Uh, first one I'm going to set to soft light. Let's, for example, this one is not too bad. Let's see. What kind of gradient you want to have here. So let's take this one and then I want to do a second one. I want to make that much lighter and set this to actually to lighten. So uh, this is too bright now. Let's see, let's set it to screen and then reduce the opacity. So we have a bit of a kind of a, a fog effect going on here, like so. So that's pretty okay, good. So the next thing I want to do is that I'm using a fog brush from the internet from a website called Brushizi. So I set my brush to white. Let's sec select the brush here, set it to white. I go to my brushes, go down here, free brushes uh, for fog. There it is. And I can now select one of those, anything you like. Put a little bit of fog in here, as you can see, like this, for example. There we go. That's pretty simple. You can also reduce the effect a little bit, reduce the opacity. Good. Okay, so now the only thing we have left to do is to put our little man in here. And the way I'm going to do that is that I will put him right on top of everything and I will resize our guy here and put him somewhere where I feel like uh, that's a good position. I think I want to maybe rotate the landscape to another position. So let's um, hide this guy again, right click, merge visible, and then we can rotate everything like so. Let's turn the guy back on so he can, he can stand back here on this position down there. And so the only thing I need to do now to make him merge well with the background is that I will go to the effects and then to color overlay, turn that on and simply select the color that is closest to his feet. So he's really merging here with this part of the background. So you can see, boom, merging with just one click, super easy to do that. And now we have our guy standing down here, looking at the tunnel in the distance. So that's the effect. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and Take part in the challenge, join the Facebook group completely for free. Of course, you can post up to three creations and I will review them in the next live stream. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next live stream or tutorial. Bye.